Welcome to the Psychology World Podcast. I'm O'Connor Whiteley, bringing you psychology news, articles and other interesting psychology related articles. Here where I can find the podcast notes and more interesting psychology related things and here where I can get your free 8 psychology book box set at ConnorWhiteley.net. Now let's get on to the show. Hi everyone and welcome to episode 110 of the Psychology World Podcast with me, Connor Whiteley. And today's episode is on three myths that clinical psychologists need to be aware of. And this is an absolutely brilliant episode that is applicable to university psychology students and all psychology professionals and pretty much anyone who is interested in a psychology. This is such an important episode because there are so many myths about mental health and these myths are so damaging, so awful that I really do want to try and tackle them. And there was just what we need to be aware of because they can impact psychotherapy and us trying to help our clients you know improve their mental health so that's coming up in the content part of today's episode and it is friday the 10th of september 2021 as i record this so moving on to psychology news section so we're going to be reading from the british psychological society research digest and the first one is hand gestures help students mentally organize new information okay Retaining new information can be tricky, especially with topics far outside of what we're familiar with. A good teacher can make a huge difference, but effective teaching techniques can add new dimensions to our ability to take on what we're being told. Now, a new study has identified one such technique, and it turns out to to be incredibly simple, hand gestures. And this, I think, is really clever and really interesting. And I guess that the whole idea behind this is, is that hand gestures they sort of break up the massive chunk of information because even when I'm doing podcast episodes, when it sounds like I'm just doing tons of information, I am doing hand gestures to sort of like break up the content and I'm really focusing on it now as, like, as I say this. Well, uh, yeah, well, like, as I like to say this, so, but it sort of breaks up the information uh, in our mind and I guess that some hand um, gestures that I can actually make it a bit more engaging, a bit more interesting, uh, just to add a bit more their ability because we can all yes because we can all listen to someone just drone on and that gets really boring and we don't listen as much so that's a very interesting point negative media coverage of immigration leads to hostility towards immigrants and in-group favoritism i cannot agree with this more and the media bias is a massive problem when it comes to uh, attitudes towards Im- towards immigration and i would love to go into the politics of it and how the media can actually influence us and political events to do with immigrants but i'm not because this is not a political show (laughs) the media plays a huge part in shaping our understanding of the world including how we respond to other people coverage of immigration is no different and pre and previous research has suggested that even subtle changes in language and uh, framing can change the way people think about immigrants a study in a scientific report looks at the real-life impact of negative media portrayals of immigrants. It finds that negative coverage can increase hostility towards immigrants and, in- and favoritism towards members of the non-migrant in-group, which can have serious financial, emotional and social consequences for communities. Yeah, I would love to go into this a lot more, but it's not a political show. <laughs> okay, so the last one is... Diversity grants can discourage divert candidates from applying for more lucrative scholarships. Oh, this is an interesting one. It's no secret that marginalised groups face barriers in educational settings that the able-bodied male and racially privileged largely do not. Issues pertaining to success, sense of belonging, potential discrimination and financial difficulties can add often insurmountable layers of complexity to applying for further education. Efforts to address the this in the recent years have crystallised into a number of measures, including the wide adoption of diversity and inclusion grants. These provide financial support specifically for selected students from marginalised groups in order to give them a more equal footing with applicants from privileged backgrounds. However, recent research has illustrated some unintended flaws with this approach. In stark contrast with the ethos behind diversity and inclusion initiative, these grants may be serving to make applications to more prestigious scholarships even less diverse than before. And this I can understand because if you think about it, why would someone from a marginalised group want to apply for something that they may not get, a really prestigious great grant that they probably won't get because there's going to be like discrimination, it's really prestigious and they feel like they're not good enough. 
when they can go for a much safer option which is specifically designed for them. So that I understand and it's definitely a flaw that needs to be fixed but it's still good that there's a baseline well a baseline and there's a foundation with these diversity and these inclusion grants that we can build on to tackle this problem a little more. So that's some psychology news section. I hope you enjoyed it. So let's move on to the personal update. So we're moving on to the personal update. So this week has very much been focusing on getting the podcasts done and like ready for my placement. And this week I've mainly been focusing on my podcast for authors because I just want to like get that done. I want to get tons of like blog posts and I want to, to start recording a little bit. I've been really focusing on that. Then I've also been doing some fiction bits. So again, not so much psychology, but next week I'm pretty much having the entire week dedicated to psychology. But on Thursday this week, as you hear this, there will be an absolutely brilliant podcast episode coming out, which I think will help tons of people. And I think it's probably one of the most heartfelt and best podcast episodes I've done because I call it In Defense of Psychology. And it's sort of and originally it was meant to be a rant, but it, but it actually ended up being so inspirational and just really good. So I really am looking forward to you listening to that because I think it will definitely help a lot of people, especially if you, especially if you feel like psychology, you're being quite disrespected because of it and you're being very stigmatized. So I really do hope that that helps because I've just recorded it and I really liked it. And personally, I really am looking forward to my placement starting because it starts a week Monday so the week that you're listening to this because then I will start to have a lot more psychology based stuff for this for this personal update so I really am looking forward to it because it'd be great to do some psychology research work with other people and as always I always like love to hear your thoughts and feelings on today's episode so you can always email me conwiley conwiley.net you can always leave a comment at the show notes at Connor Whiteley done it forward slash podcast and you can always tweet me on Twitter at sci-fi whiteley. I always love to hear from all of you. And this episode has been sponsored by A Normal Psychology, the causes and treatments of depression, anxiety, and more a third edition. This is such a brilliant book for today's episode because this book really goes into great depth about what causes and how depression is is treated. So it looks at the biological, social and cognitive factors then also goes into the, to the amazing different ways to be treated. So if you want to learn more about depression and if you want to know how it's treated and all of the different causes then I really do recommend this at a great book because it's written in such an easy to understand way and it's really engaging. This is not a boring textbook in the slightest but you also get to look at tons of other different conditions. For example, anxiety, all the different types of anxiety, and also like schizophrenia. That is a great one, so I really do recommend this a great book. So that is A Normal Psychology, Mega Causes and Treatments of Depression, Anxiety and More, a third edition, available from all major ebook retailers, and you can order the paperback, hardback and large print version from Amazon, your local books, or local library if you request it. And if you didn't want to buy a book, then you can now give me a one-time bit of support from buymeacoffee.com. This is an absolutely great way if you just want, if you really liked an episode and you just want to give a, a bit of like one-time support and you don't want to buy a book. So if you wanted to buy me a coffee, then please go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash Connor Whiteley. So let's move on to the content part of today's episode. So moving on to the content part of today's episode. So we're going to be talking about three myths about depression that clinical psychologists need to be aware of because these myths are really dangerous, really damaging and they can really make a person feel even worse about themselves. So this leads to another decrease in their mental health and in therapy this can be a massive hurdle to actually helping them and helping them improve their life. So these myths we've got to tackle and hopefully this episode will help a little bit. Depression is something you can pull yourself out of. So to anyone who's done clinical psychology, read my abnormal psychology book or just done anything to do with psychology, (laughs) this myth has probably shocked you and appalled you because we know that depression is not a choice and no one wants to have the symptoms associated with depression because depression takes away a meaningful life And it has a lot of negative impacts on a person's social network, including themselves, their friends and their family. So depression is not a choice, but lots of people seem to think it is. And this is just really strange and I cannot understand this. But the idea that depression is something so easy and simple that a person can just simply pull themselves out of it is silly because 
Of course, you've got the cognitive impacts, the biological and the environmental factors. So this is why psychotherapy is actually needed uh, quite a bit. And that's another reason why I'm not a fan of the biomedical model, because it simply says that if we give you some uh, drugs, you're going to be fine without taking into the cognitive aspects of it and the environmental factors. So this myth is extremely damaging and dangerous because it underestimates and it undervalues what a person with depression is experiencing possibly resulting in them not seeking professional help help that they need. And this can be a massive barrier to therapeutic success, even if they do seek out professional therapy, due to the client could constantly be blaming themselves for not being able to pull themselves out of it, because surely, because everyone says it, it must be true, which again is wrong and it's another myth. So all of these myths work together, which is really damaging and just such a shame. So as psychology professionals, or if if you're like me, a psychology student, then we need to be aware of these myths and prepare to tackle it in psychotherapy if we need to. You must have a reason for your depression. This is something I've spoken about on the podcast before, but lots of people seem to think that depressed people have a reason to be depressed and something is wrong with them. Then they mostly, well intentionally, say that the client shouldn't be depressed because there is nothing to be depressed about and they have everything. Now, this myth is really problematic for two main reasons. So the first one is that the depressed person already feels guilty about being depressed and having something wrong with them, even though, of course, they don't have anything wrong with them. It's just something that they have and something that we can help them with. So by saying silly things like this, people are only making the mental health condition worse because this adds to the guilt that they're already experiencing. Secondly, this brings back to the first myth because it undervalues what the, de- what the depressed person is experiencing. So what if they have everything? Happiness isn't actually measured in things and the things that truly make people happy aren't even tangible or asset-based most of the time and that I will talk about in a future podcast episode. So when it comes to this myth, we need the client and those around them to be aware that depression isn't, doesn't need a reason to exist. It's just something that happens and it can be supported and the impact can be lessened. And something else that I that right and like something else that I need to say though is that depression doesn't need a reason, but there is a reason why the depression manifests itself in a given time. For example, in the diastasis stress model, it's the stress of an event that, act, that, that activates the genetic factors of a condition that causes the mental health condition to manifest itself. And in formulation in psychotherapy, in that book that I did, I write about what's known as the CBT formulation, where you talk about participating factors and there are like four other things like the 5p model yes yeah, so like these are factors that caused the amount of adaptive behavior but depression itself does not need a reason to occur within a person it is the combination of genetic and environmental factors that cause depression and that isn't a reason for depression it's just a simple set of factors that are outside a person's control so again though they don't need a reason to be depressed depression is just something that happens and something that we can help them with And we're on to a a good last one. Only the weak get depression. So if you have been listening to the podcast for a while, then you might have laughed at this one because you know I hate these sort of silly societal myths. These are so outdated and old-fashioned that I really don't have any time for people who believe in that myth because they're just so outdated and it's just these myths are really holding back mental health from where they need to be. And it's actually this myth that actually inspired me to write Thursday's episode, so episode 111. Anyway, so some people believe that mental health and mental health conditions are just made up and that only the weak, pathetic people get them. This is absolute rubbish. Depression and other conditions are nothing to do with how weak or how strong you are, even though the whole idea of that is just silly. And because it's all to do with a set of genetic and environmental factors that interact with each other. So this is nothing to do with how weak a person is or the type of person they are. And it should never, ever be used as a justification for discrimination. For example, the classic one that I hear is uh, women get depressed so it shows how weak they are. They are. And then uh, usually the men are superior, like it gets added on to the end. But this is, out- this, is- this is outrageous and I really could go into the reason why governments will never take mental health seriously as they need to because of this single, and- this single myth and misconception by won't. Overall, as psychology students and as professionals, we need to be aware of this massive and very common myth in society. We will face it too and that's why, more- and that's why I talk about Thursday. 
Lots of people think psychologists are fake and with and that we're making up problems where they aren't any. But we will continue to fight these myths and continue to provide the best care we can for our clients because it's our job to alleviate psych- psychological distress and improve lives. And if we were just making the things up, we would not be improving lives, but we are. So I do talk a lot more about this particular myth on like on Thursday and I get so personal in that episode. You're going to really enjoy it, so I cannot recommend it enough. So uh, please um, look at that Thursday episode. So I really hope that you enjoyed today's episode and I hope that you learned something. And if you want to learn more, then please check out Normal Psychology, The Causes and Treatments of Depression, Anxiety and More, 3rd Edition, available from all major ebook retailers. And you can get the payback, hardback and large print versions from Amazon, your local bookstore and local library if you request it. And if you want to give a bit of like one-time support, then please go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash Connor Whiteley. And if you know someone who would enjoy today's episode, then please share it with them. I'm always really grateful when you wonderful people help spread the word about the podcast. So have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see the show notes, then please go to connorwhitesley.net. And if you want a free eight book psychology box set, then please go to connorwhitesley.net. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.